long. Now when I have to say something long and I don't have to constantly tap on my keyboard. So choose position that's comfortable for you. Choose position that's comfortable for the audience so they can see you and they can understand it better. Move your eyes, I already mentioned. Don't concentrate on one spot and or one person. Move your eyes. First of all, your eyes won't get tired. You'll be speaking five to seven minutes, but still, if you have never done public presentation, you may be very tired after those seven minutes. So make sure your eyes also move around and don't rest on one item. It, plus it always helps when you look far away and then move your eyes close. It kind of relaxes your, your vision. Rehearse, very important. Who doesn't know what rehearsing is? Hmm? Practice. 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 With my wife, he is a listen. <laughs> and I, talk, I timed myself. I put a timer. I timed myself, so it has to be within certain time. Rehearse. First time ever when I rehearsed, it felt weird because I'll be talking to myself, and what if someone sees me? What if, what if they think I have some mental problem? <laughs> but, but this is for business. This is your business right now. You, you're studying. This is for you. So no one is going to tell you. Anything. If your roommate or your relative gives you kind of funny look, just I'm sorry. This is my deal. Go to your room. Um, time yourself. Put a clock, a watch, or, or computer, or phone that has time, and time yourself when you're rehearsing. And rehearse more than one time. Some people prefer to look in the mirror when they rehearse. For example, I don't. I just look through the window, look around, and look at the time. That helps me. But rehearsing is very, very important. Because once you say it several times, you won't get stumbled. You won't get scared. You won't make a mistake in front of public. Because it's different when you're in your room and in public. Remember those four walls? You, rehearsing is very important. Talk slow and talk clear. We all have accent. I do have an accent. It will never go away. It's my foreign accent. So I have to talk slow. I have to talk clear. I have problem. I was told I am eating the endings. So when I talk a little fast, I eat the endings. So I have to enunciate. I don't know personally who has a problem here, but if you do, make sure enunciate. So whatever you do, make sure public room understands what you're talking about. And if you talk slow, they have a chance to raise hand and ask questions. I'm sorry, can you repeat it, please? So make sure whatever you're delivering is for the audience. Make sure they understand you. And of course, be ready to answer questions. So know your subject. Be ready to answer questions because questions will be asked. Actually, it's encouraged in this class, I'm sure, that audience ask questions, ask speaker questions. Make sure speaker knows very well his subject. So that takes us to the next point, material. Talk about what you know. That's very important. That will make your life way easier. Of course, you have already chosen your topics, so I'm sure you chose, I hope you chose the one you'll be comfortable with. For example, if I decide to make a presentation on, uh, let's say, bullfighting in Spain, every, some people heard about it, some people know, but it's very interesting. If I do research, I can do a good presentation. But if a person from Spain comes, he will do much better presentation because that's his culture that he knows about it. And if I'm asked questions about it, I would know some of the details a person knows. If I am uh, assigned to do a presentation about a uh, wall of a Great Wall of China, I can do research and do it. But I wouldn't be as comfortable answering questions as a person who knows about it better, very well, either person from China or scientist who does who knows well about that wall. Something, something like that. I can talk, for example, better about soccer than about rugby. I know much about rugby. I know more about soccer. I cannot talk about um, cycling on the streets as well as I do about mountain biking. I know about mountain biking more about cycling on the streets. So choose subject that you'll be comfortable with. Choose subject that you know. Choose subject that you'll be ready to answer questions about. Know your audience. This refers to, for example, if you are a great scientist. For example, if I want to make a presentation, I'm going to make a presentation about uh, 
uh, great outcomes of material foundings in a Russian cotton plantation. You'll be like, what? This is not the audience for that. I may know the subject very well, but for you it will be boring. Yeah. Choose a subject that the audience will like and appreciate. Something interesting, something simple for them. Even if you know very well about your, you know, something in your major, I don't know your majors, maybe you have chosen ones, you know something very well. Um, good example, in my ESL class a long time ago, there was a student from Turkey, and his major was geology, a study of Earth. And he made a very detailed and good presentation about geology, but it was boring. He chose a lot of terminology, he described in details how Earth is designed, how this and that, and it wasn't interesting at all. So, even if you know something, will make it interesting for the public. Keep it interesting, as I mentioned. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Whatever you do, keep it simple. You have to provide details, but make sure details are not overwhelming. They are not confusing public. They are not diverting attention from the main point. The simpler, the easier, the better. And of course, rehearse. With everything rehearse, rehearse. In dimension rehearse, yeah, it's very important, seriously. Whoever, uh, do we have someone who's going to be presenting Wednesday or not yet? I think Monday is going to be the first. Monday, and I okay. have two outlines here which are ready to go. So we have so Monday so present, you have a week. Make sure during the week, Present several times. Don't save everything to Sunday evening. <laughs> Don't. It will be difficult. At least do it twice before Sunday, and then of course Sunday, the night before. Content. Nothing special here, of course. Have your main idea. For example, you have a sample outline in the handouts given to you. Your main idea is, for example, um, I like to study at GPC Dunwood. That's your main idea. Main idea have to have supporting ideas. Why you like this? For example, you have great instructors here, or there is not much traffic, or it's close to your house, or you like campus because it's very green, or some other things. I'm just giving them basic ideas, but something that will support your main idea. Something simple and understandable to everyone. Give some interesting facts and events in whatever subject you're giving. I'm sure somebody will be talking about the culture uh, of your country. Give us some interesting facts that we don't know or we know a little bit. Some events that happened there. Even if you're writing about college. Oh, one, one time there was this nice event, we had orientation, and I really liked the professor's presentation on the subject of business administration. Fact. Oh, remember that last fall there was this nice fair in college I attended. That was that was very interesting. I thought um, that would guide me very well in my st st studies. Something interesting and simple, of course. Uh, these days, internet gives us great access to pretty much everything. Twenty years ago, to get a picture of let's see, Great Wall of China, I had to go to the library, find the book. And at those times, scanners did not exist. I had to make a Xerox copy and it would be black and white. Or I had to cut it out from the magazine that would be mine, otherwise I'll be kicked out from the library. These days, you know, I just right click and use it. Uh, save to your hard drive and use it. Internet gives you great access to everything. Kind of enhance your presentation of photos, pictures, and drawing. Anything, any pictures, any drawing, as long as they're appropriate, good quality, and they actually correspond to the subject you're talking about. Again, they have to be easily understood and comprehended and appreciated by the audience. Something interesting. Of course, you know, like, uh, again, it's not required to use colors, fonts, different fonts, different illustration, different effects. You know, the current version of PowerPoint has so much. You can just do so much. But again, keep it simple. You can also enhance some just for some pictures flying from the left 
text appearing in the bottom, something emerges from the background, but do not overload it. Do not overload it. Okay, a little bit, keep it simple. And of course, have a basic conclusion for your project. Something, um, why you chose this topic as your top, as topic of your presentation. Kind of support main idea with logical conclusion. Something like, for example, if you, I chose presentation of uh, Great Wall of China, and then you talk about it at the end, this is the most amazing monument I've ever seen. I highly recommend it uh, as a touristic area. Please visit it. Something simple. But make sure to conclude what you're talking about. And of course, after you've done all, all the enhancements, what do you do? What do you do? You rehearse again. <laughs> you rehearse again, yeah. Because you have to be, if you're ready to present all verbally, make sure you're comfortable and your presentation follows your screen normally. The uh, pace of your voice is according to the pace of what people see on the screen. So you have to be rehearsing. Okay, this slide appears. This is what I have to say. Then transition comes, and this is what I have to say. And that's it. Any questions on anything? <laughs>